Kaksel kautta yksi. Hei, minä olen Niina Niskanen ja me olemme täällä Finconissa juttelemassa Lois McMaster Bujoldille. Uh, welcome. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, have you enjoyed Finland so far? Oh yes, I had a couple of days in Helsinki before the convention. We did some standard touring things. It's a beautiful city. And I've been very well taken care of by my Finnish hosts. Um, uh, the French w- version of the Warrior's Apprentice was made into a comic book version. Are there any any other uh, plans to do comic books? <coughs> Not at this time. That one actually uh, was supposed to be published in three volumes and they only got volume one and it did not sell well enough so there will be no volume two or three it stops in the middle <laughs> that's so. that's that's horrific uh <laughs> do you maybe else. nothing else is in the works at this time okay um the Vorkosigan saga started out as, out as the story of aral and cordelia cordelia Miles's mm-hmm. parents will there be a next generation of Vorkosigans? well we certainly have uh miles who is the main series character and has 14 books under his belt by now. Uh, So uh, I do not think I will go on to a third generation at this time, but I I say the writer always reserves the right to have a better idea. So, you know, there are no guarantees. I I have no grand overarching plan for the series. I make it up one book at a time, so I never know where it's going to go next. Um, you mentioned in, in a Lightspeed interview last year that the Chalian series is lacking a story but has a sense of imbalance. Do you think you'll, you'll return to it or write another, another fantasy series like The Sharing Life? Uh, I don't know. Uh, once again, uh, you caught me between books. I just finished a book called Captain Vorpatrol's Alliance recently, which is just coming up on publication this fall. And I'm still feeling around for my next project at the moment. The Chalian book uh, series is structurally interesting in that it has a thematic structure. It ought to be one book for each of the five gods of which I have finished three. Uh, So we have two more gods, the father god and the mother god, that want stories, but I haven't haven't quite got uh, the right ideas yet that come together and reach that critical creative mass that says, yes, write me. You, you've received quite a few Hugos. Um, some of the other Hugo winners have been posting funny pictures of their Hugos, uh, such as the Christmas tea, tree topper by Mary Robin at Kowal. Uh, where do you keep yours? Mine at the moment are in the basement, uh, which is actually a, a sort of family room that I had uh, was trying to set up as a library, but then my son moved back in, so now it's his bedroom. <laughs> so when, when he moves out again, it will be a library with Hugos on the shelf and all my... Uh, foreign and uh, other editions all around them it will be very splendid but but now it's kind of full of boy um, you've won quite a few awards as well as scads of nov- nominations uh, does your heart still skip a beat when you receive a nomination or has it become a uh, part of the humdrum uh, it's certainly not humdrum it's uh, it's I, I'm torn between excitement and being slightly embarrassed you know should I be taking another turn when other people haven't had theirs yet it's like going around at the buffet you know, too many times uh, but it is really awards are not something that a writer does awards are something that is done to the writer to the books you know so it is not my vote you know it's the fans decision so it's kind of like leave it up to them it's their responsibility uh, so I kind of duck the whole issue that way um. You uh, mentioned yesterday that you have quite a peculiar uh, outlining method. Would you care to elaborate about that? Okay, yeah. My writing process has sort of developed over time. Uh, it began when I was when I started writing. My children were one and three, and I had to sort of work around being a mother and you know chasing them and uh, just get these little teeny blocks of time uh, out uh, when I wasn't you know keeping them from killing themselves. Uh, so I would make notes, and uh, when I got a certain critical mass of notes, I would take my notes to the public library, write my first draft in longhand in pencil in a notebook, take it home, and then in the middle of the chaos, I could transcribe it onto first my typewriter, later my computer. Uh, and this system has evolved over the years as my environment has changed. You know, the children started school, and I was able to work you know, with blocks of time at home, so I stopped going to the library. I still use the, the outline first draft... Um, Uh, typed system for a while, but then that first draft dropped out, so I go straight from the uh, scene outlines, which are fairly detailed. They're almost like a really messy first draft. Yeah. Onto the computer, type the first type draft. At that point, 
All of the structural work has been done at the outline stage, so I don't do very much uh, revising uh, in, the, in the sense of you know, changing scenes around or throwing stuff away unless I've taken a real wrong turn. Uh, it's, it's in a fairly efficient way of writing because I had to really, I had very limited time when I started. Um, do you have any secret sciences to pass on to the aspiring writers? Uh, there, there are no real secrets. I mean, it's the same advice you get all the time. Uh, you learn to write by writing, so sit down, write, finish things. You know, <laughs> it's like that's how it's done. Writing is the least regulated profession in the world. Anyone can do it. They can't stop you. Uh, there's a great deal more advice online now than there used to be when I started. I began in a vacuum and had to kind of make it up myself. Uh, but there are, there's also some bad advice online, so you have to kind of work, work out where, where you're going to find it. A uh, good uh, sort of blog advice column in English is uh, a blog by Patricia C. Reedy, W-R-E-D-E -E is how that's spelled. And she does uh, writing posts twice a week. Uh, that are a little short and uh, very practical uh, and uh, she does a lot of writing teaching so she has a good sense of the different methods that people need to use the kind of different visceral techniques that are right what is right for one person is not necessarily right for the next so it's not a one-size-fits-all thing so that's a good blog uh, resource and there's you know, a million more nowadays uh, the current great fi uh, wisdom, especially for writers wanting to bre break into science fiction and fantasy, is to write short fiction. You yourself have written very little short fiction. What Was that a conscious choice or didn't just turn out that way? I think each writer has a natural length, you know, that uh, my natural length is the novel. I wrote short stories in the beginning because I had that same advice. It's not really true. Uh, you have just as good a chance of breaking in with a novel as with the short stories. Whatever you do best will give you the best chance. Um, the short story market has changed a great deal over the years. It was just those few magazines back in the 80s when I broke in, and now we have all this online uh, venues that did not exist before, and I can't really give advice about those because I haven't done short work in 20 years. I started selling novels and never looked back. Uh, my friend Pat Patricia Reedy, who, who does yeah. the writing advice blog, uh, tried to write short stories and they never came together. The first thing she ever sold was a novel. You know, she'd sold five novels before she ever sold a short story. So I think that advice is uh, only true for those writers who are natural short story writers. And the rest of us can, might as well just go on with our novels, which is where our hearts lie. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> um, we uh, asked for some uh, fan questions and um, we got two that were particularly good and um, one of them is Miles Vorkosigan uh, is a very hyperactive person and that's kind of a trait that seems to be um, very annoying to the people around them. Uh, <laughs> do you have personal experience with uh, that kind of personalities or uh, why did you make him a hyperactive person? Well he sort of arrived that way it was not a conscious choice it was just part of his, his intense drive it emerges that way he's such a small package and he has so much energy. Uh, and certainly I think, you know, if, if one lived with that, one would find it very <laughs> wearing. But for me, it's, it's sort of wish fulfillment. I'm not a high energy person myself, and I wish I were. So I have Miles go be energetic for me. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And also he makes stories happen. He's, he's a character you just unleash the leash and turn him loose, and he makes, he makes uh, events. He makes uh, adventures for himself. You know. right. if, if you have the stodgy older character, it takes an enormous amount of work to lever him out of the rut yeah. and get him started on his story. Okay, um, then the last question would be, would you rather live on Barea or Beta col Colony? Mm, I prefer the outdoors on Barea. I prefer the government on Beta Colony, so it's, it's hard to choose. I try to make my worlds, uh, all of them are complex and mixed and have good and bad points, so... Uh, so I think uh, mm, I would have trouble choosing. Uh, both have their advantages and disadvantages.